God. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, Corey. Hi. Mr. Tang. Hi. So good. Wonderful. Good. Bill, 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 just, Bill, just, uh, Bill, just, um, uh, I mean, thank you, Bill, for spending the time. And then, uh, sure. And uh, I know you, you, you went through a, a tough journey housewise last year. And uh, but you know, Bill's always been there every time I reach out to him. And, uh, Whenever you need anything, Corey, you know, just ask. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Fang. You have a chance to meet last time he was in Taiwan. Yes. Hi, and then, Hi Richard. Hi. And then uh, Ray as well. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ray. And then I'd like to uh, introduce Audrey. And uh, and uh, Audrey has been, uh, uh, I might say, an uh, uh, amazing holder of the space. For, for Taiwan to have opportunity to innovate, to rethink That's about great. what we want mm -hmm. to do, you know, with all these initiatives from different, you know, in social enterprise, in B Corp, in many of different areas, mm -hmm. but she's she's uh, she's managing to create that space for people to mm -hmm. have a dialogue and continue mm -hmm. to to build on top of that, you know, mm -hmm. working together instead of working in silos, mm -hmm. and uh, so I it's a it's a great honor to have you and Audrey and. We have this opportunity to 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 learn more from you that what's going on in benefit corporation globally, mm -hmm. and then uh, also to to share about. Um, mm -hmm. I will I will hope that, uh, as you can also talk about uh, uh, her thoughts for Taiwan, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then Ray and Professor mm -hmm. Fong's been you know driving the initiative for for benefit corporation. Mm -hmm. So we have this opportunity mm -hmm. for exchange. Yeah, physically, yeah. we're in the. Um, Social Innovation Lab in the Taiwan Air Force. Uh, here we are uh, a host of incubator and accelerators for more than 30 social enterprises here physically. And we're a uh, central Taipei, like this is like the, the most uh, heart of Taipei uh, place. Uh, and so it shows our dedication from the central government uh, to have a really um, organic uh, flow of people coming in and out of um, central Taipei to visit this place and this place opens till 11 p.m. every every day and then uh, including weekends and every Wednesday I'm here from 10 to 10 uh, in my office hour um, to provide service to social entrepreneurs and innovators so you're part of the office hour and so um, <laughs> because of this this, this, this this will be on the record we will be making a transcript and have you uh, check it before publishing it yeah. That, that's great. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Mr. Tang, um, and I'm looking forward to whatever we can do. I think it's a great and exciting opportunity in Taiwan, and congratulations on the space that you have there. So, Corey, what do we want to talk about? Um, well, if, if, um, if you could share with us the current status globally on benefit corporations, and then the impacts that 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 that's by happening for these countries. Uh -huh. as yeah. Well. So yeah. so uh, just as a background, I've I've read this. So. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that that's now the Bible for our movement, um, <laughs> along with the B Corp handbook and a couple of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, well, um, at the moment, uh, Corey and Minister Tang, we have. 36 states in the United States that have amended their state corporation laws. Mm -hmm. And as I think you know, uh, the country of Italy has also amended its corporation law. Mm -hmm. There are other countries that are also considering legislation. Uh, there's legislation that has had four hearings in the Colombian legislature. It has only one hearing left, and then it's ready for enactment. There's a proposal that's been formally introduced in Argentina as well. There's legislation that was introduced in Chile, uh, and, and an amendment was recently prepared to the legislation in Chile. So there's quite a bit of activity in South America with those three countries, and there's a group of lawyers in Brazil and another group in Uruguay that have also proposed draft legislation in Latin America. There's a 
concentrated effort that's just been launched in France, looking at an amendment of French corporation law. Uh, the government has launched a consultation, and they're going to have a report that will be issued laying out uh, the things that they want to study next week, actually on January 18th. They'll be accepting testimony and soliciting the views of the private sector in France. Uh, so the B Corps will be uh, submitting their views there. A proposal was made to the government in the United Kingdom uh, to consider this. Uh, the Ministry of Justice in Portugal has endorsed the concept and wants to see legislation. A legislator in Australia is ready to introduce legislation in Australia. Uh, we're waiting now to hold that introduction until the government has had a chance to actually analyze the legislation in Australia. So we're optimistic that something will happen there. Uh, so things are happening really around the world, and I would love to see Taiwan be one of the leaders, depending on what we all decide we can make happen. <laughs> and we're going to need your advice in particular, uh, Minister Tang, to help us with that, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so what else can I tell you about what's already happening, Corey or Minister Tang or Ray or Richard? You know. Okay, right. So, so <laughs> let me just say a little brief of the legislative uh, status here in Taiwan, just so yes. that we're on the same page. Um, before I joined the cabinet, um, um, that was a, a year and three months ago, uh, at that time already, because in our new uh, legislative body, there are two young uh, MPs, uh, respectively, have formed their own social enterprises. Um, that would be Jason Xu from KMT and Karen Yu uh, from the DPP. And so they have respectively proposed their own versions um, of social enterprise related laws uh, before I took the charge of becoming the mini digital ministry in charge of social entrepreneurship. Um, and in brief, Jason Xu's version is pretty much um, the same as the benefit corporation uh, law everywhere. Uh, and it's pretty standard. Um, and, um, and, and, excuse me, was that actually introduced as legislation? Yes. It was, um, I think, introduced as a bill, passed the first reading, and, and is waiting for the second reading. Oh, wow. Reading. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that's, I think Jason is, like, because he, he always proposes bills such as, you know, uh, self-driving autonomous cars and uh, <laughs> experiments. So, so <laughs> is our futuristic MP. Uh, and right. Very cutting edge. Yeah, good. Uh, okay. Sharing economy, basic law, and, and things right. like that. Yeah. Um, and and so uh, and Karen is uh, quite a bit more concerned about um, the the role of government funding uh, in building a impact investment ecosystem because to be to be honest uh, Taiwan actually in Asia has one of the largest thriving uh, for benefits corporations seen but the impact investing is probably in the bottom uh, of the, the AVPN uh, network. And uh, Karen thinks that's because uh, the lack of a very visible signal uh, for the impact investors to see that this government um, you know, is serious about this and that the government puts in legislation that enables the social enterprises to not uh, exceed um, you know, its original benefit purpose. So always the investor uh, is faced with the risk of it being diluted or otherwise not honored. Um, so, right. Um, yeah, right. so, so that's, that's Karen's main concern. She's less concerned uh, with the actual, you know, um, whether it's a co-op, whether it's a uh, MPO, or whether it is a company, uh, she's more concerned about the investment ecosystem. And so in her law, um, her, her version of the bill, she introduced a earned income-based way of uh, telling social enterprises from non-social enterprises, regardless of its uh, structure of incorporation. And then uh, she, she says basically that for um, companies or co-ops or MPOs fitting that particular criteria, uh, the government should lead with a government-backed fund uh, to, to build the ecosystem and to, to match or attract uh, other investors. So I would say Karen's version and uh, Jason's version are actually complementary and not at all mm -hmm. uh, with each other. Uh, and so um, 
personally, before joining the cabinet, uh, I was part of the consultation process uh, facilitator to pass the so-called closely held corporation uh, law section of the Taiwan Company Act. And in that uh, particular p uh, chapter of the act, uh, we say that uh, for you know uh, companies with less than 50 shareholders, we allow their company charter their founding document to define non-transferable special voting rights, you know, all, all the usual things uh, that allow, right. uh, you know, non-dilution of the original purpose. And so sure. um, that was right. passed uh, very quickly because the consultation process is um, bipartisan or multipartisan, and and also there's very little doubt that it will be beneficial uh, to keep the original company purpose instead of being uh, diluted by by shareholders uh, that joins later in the rounds. And so that part was already passed. And now, um, uh, Professor Fang actually is our um, leading expert in the second round of consultation, which is to change the company law itself to allow the company to declare it's not just for profit, but actually, you know, uh, have a double or triple bottom line. And that's already in our uh, next version of the company law now proposed by the administration to the parliament. Because in the Taiwan Constitution, it's allowed for the administration itself to propose, like AMP, a version to the parliament. And so in our version, we put in two things. One is the um, idea of a double or triple or multiple bottom line company that is now formally allowed. And then uh, we also put in a clause that allows each company to um, publicly declare uh, its charter, its founding document as open data uh, for third party audits so that uh, it sends a very clear signal if in the company uh, founding documents that the company is willing to disclose um, their, you know, reports and you know, the, the usual things, right? And so, right. Okay. Uh, and we also ask our Ministry of Economy Affairs to make an interpretation of the existing company law, saying, you know, the existing company law can be interpreted in the spirit of our newly proposed company law. So this actually already takes effect uh, as of last week. And so that that was my version of things. So that's the three version currently all in the parliament awaiting debate uh, in the next session after we deal with this labor law thing, which should um, hopefully end uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> And so what, what has been the reaction to those various proposals? Right. Uh, so the uh, public declaration, opt-in declaration of company founding charters, that is an unanimous. For our consultation, we send a questionnaire, and I think of the hundreds of the respondents, 100% supported uh, this uh, transparency and accountability part of the new company law. So that that is, there's no problem with that. And uh, I'm so, sorry, and, and, and that was your proposal, proposal rather than Jason's or Karen? That was my proposal, yeah. Good, okay. So does that stand a good chance of being accepted? I think so. Excellent, yeah. okay. Right, and as for double or triple button line, we haven't faced any opposition, right, from, from any stakeholders. So I would say uh, the administration's version is pretty safely, we can assume that it will pass as is. Good, okay. Right, and of uh, the two uh, legislators' proposal, I'm uh, I'm actually not not so sure of uh, whether it will be passed next session. Mostly because they are coming from opposite parties, even though those proposals are in complement with each other. And so I think uh, one of the key issue here is for both proposals to get cross partisan support. Uh, and but I'm not so sure about uh, their respective uh, agenda of getting cross-partisan support for their two proposals. So, and because it is part of legislative, constitutionally, I'm not allowed to comment <laughs> on the likelihood <laughs> right. of, uh, of their passing, yeah. But if your proposal, the third one, I guess the government's proposal is accepted, do we even need Jason's proposal? Well, I mean, your proposal would permit people to do pretty much everything that B Corps want to do, I think. Right. And, and so that would be a norm instead of a, you know, a chapter, right? Basically, okay. if there's a chapter, the chapter would say that it has to require, you know, four things or five things and so on.
uh, with my proposal, basically, <coughs> the independent uh, auditing or investment community will have to set their norms and say only companies who declare these four things in the charter will be recognized uh, with the certification. And so it is a more ecosystem determined view. And where J Jason is basically the Minister of Economy or the, the National Development Council get to decide which four things are basic. So it is a government led in his proposal. And in my proposal, it is actually civil society and private sector led, which is interesting given our respective duties, but it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I understand. So, so uh, let, let, me, let me make, make a couple, couple of comments. One, one of the things that we are finding in the United States in particular, where we have benefit corporations, is that it's useful for investors in states where there are benefit corporations to have that form because they know immediately what they're investing in. Mm -hmm. and, and there's been a concern that if there's not enough structure, mm -hmm. it makes it less easy for people to invest because they have to do more diligence mm -hmm. and they have to put more work in understanding exactly what the company is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if there were some kind of agreed minimums or at least if people knew exactly what they were investing in, that might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as but, as, yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. please. It, well, well, but, but what you described, mm -hmm. I think, would provide specifically what the B Corp community needs. Mm -hmm. Because as I understand it, the Taiwanese law would validate a commitment to the triple bottom line and would commit and would validate a commitment to consider the interests of stakeholders. That's, that's exactly right. Yes. Right. And, and those are the things that we care most about, along with a transparency obligation, which I think you also mm -hmm. would include. Yes. Uh, now, I should caution you that one of the questions that we have encountered in other countries, and this has been raised particularly in France, mm -hmm. is a concern in the business community that if we allow companies to expand their purpose mm -hmm. so that they're triple bottom line companies, it may expose the directors and management to new challenges and lawsuits that they are not subject to under existing law. Mm -hmm. And is there a way to limit the law provisions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, so one of the things that uh, we asked the Ministry of Economy to make an interpretation of is exactly this question. And so oh, the, good. the Ministry of uh, Economy says even without the new company law, even without the proposed version, even in the existing company law, um, because this is a... Per particular thing in, in Taiwan uh, in that uh, we say um, make a profit, but make a profit and make a benefit in Taiwan is actually the, the same Chinese word. So uh, okay. right? it's the same word, it's Li, right? So, so Li Yi, um, it could be narrowly interpreted as a financial only benefit, or it could be you know, um, pretty widely interpreted as a general purpose benefit. And so uh, in the interpretation, um, the Ministry of Economy explicitly recognized uh, the wider view of mm -hmm. the, the, the word Li to mean benefit instead of profit. Uh, and so uh, with that interpretation in mind, it says that uh, in the company law, uh, our section um, 20, close 23, uh, cannot be used uh, to, to uh, accuse against uh, the CEOs or the uh, team in charge of a company if provided that uh, the shareholders know in advance as part of company charter or other communication documents that uh, the company is set up with the explicit purpose of multiple bottom line. So the interpretation is worded, I think, with the suggestion of the B Corp government uh, movement. And so I think that is uh, has been taken care of. Okay, so that means that employees or environmental activists exactly. would not have the ability to bring a challenge. Well, they will have the 
uh, they will have the ability to, to bring a challenge, but it is not a challenge that is formally recognized as a structure of the company law. It will have to go through the usual uh, ways, like uh, they publish a charter, and the charter uh, promised something to their shareholders, but they're not doing exactly that, and uh, so it will have to uh, be brought up by a shareholder that says you're not doing what you have claimed to do, which is the benefit of the environment. And I think that's the, the right interpretation. Oh, well, 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 that's, that's all right. right. So, so uh, there's, there's no, no problem with shareholders mm -hmm. being able to bring challenges, but a person who is an employee, for example, but not a shareholder, mm -hmm. or a person who's an environmental activist, but not a shareholder, mm -hmm. we would not want to have the ability to Bring a challenge or make trouble. will actually have the right. I'm not sure about activists, though. I, that, that would be for Professor Pang's specialty. So not the, not the activists. Okay. Um, well, are there already rights of employees to bring yeah, bring challenges to, complaints to complaints of, of companies not uh, fulfilling its... But, but that's the, the more general whistleblower. What, what I said is that oh, sure. th this is not part of um, for the benefit or for the uh, double or triple button line. This is more like right. the, the, the employee yeah. making a whistleblowing, um, a, like a, a investigation requirement to the Environmental Protection Agency or to the Labor Law Arbitration Committee saying that the company produced to do X but is actually doing Y. So it's not designed for the benefit corporations. It's just a general way for employees to do whistleblowing. That's fine. We're not trying to limit rights that already exist. Mm -hmm. The concern is that by committing the company to the triple bottom line, we don't want to create new rights mm -hmm. for people who are not shareholders. And the, the reason we're concerned about that is simply that we don't want to discourage companies from electing this new form. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we want to do is encourage people to expand their purposes, mm -hmm. you know, not create obstacles for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I, I don't think there's any existing way for activists uh, to, to bring these challenges. Yeah. But for okay. employees, it's part of the normal uh, company governance uh, laws. Yeah. Well, th this sounds very good. Uh -huh. What are our chances of getting it passed? I would say more than 80%. It's pretty high, the administration version. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Corey, what did the, have you talked to the B Corps in Taiwan? Regarding what have they said? Regarding supporting this, this bill? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we actually don't have an opportunity. Um, I'm, I wasn't aware of the exact ramification mm -hmm. of this bill. I heard some information, mm -hmm. but I, I, I don't have that clear information. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I can relate to the communities. Mm -hmm. um, there's one point that the one that bill that you you mentioned just now, the one before before talking about whistleblowers, mm -hmm. is that. Um, the signal, I think, I think it's um, what I, I really appreciate what Karen's doing. Mm -hmm. That she's trying to mobilize mm -hmm. the ability for government to be engaged on the impact investing. Oh yeah. And then, um, like I, I been with uh, been with uh, communication with ABPN and there's a North Asia investment community as well. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I'm not quite sure if not the 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 search costs for mm -hmm. the for the impact investors mm -hmm. to invest in company like this. Mm -hmm. So with this bill, yes, I think you 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 serve all the purpose of the companies, mm -hmm. right? But in terms of the search costs and and then to bring foreign investment to bring the activity of impact mm -hmm. investor on the private sector mm -hmm. to come into this market, I think that that piece still sound missing to you. Yeah, that would that would take I think a a, a another multi stakeholder mechanism focus on investing. What we're talking about is more of the structure. And then uh, it will the investing arm will need another governance structure, and the procurement part will need another um, 
governance structure, and that we're also working on. Yeah. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. but, but, but those are different pieces than this first proposal, I think. Mm -hmm. um, is there? Could you send me a copy of the text? Oh yeah, of course. Corey. One of the things, Corey, that I think we should do is make sure that some of the larger B Corps in Taiwan know what's being proposed and have looked at it and have talked about it with their lawyers, uh, particularly now that I think we have a publicly traded company in Taiwan, don't we, that's a B Corp at this point? Yeah. And, and, and I, would, I would want to make sure that they've looked at it and that their lawyers understand it and would be supportive of what we're doing? And I think that actually would be helpful, too, if we could tell people that some of the larger B Corps all support this proposal. That would be good political support. Right. Yeah, so, so that's... Pretty much it, uh, and and uh, the whistleblower uh, act uh, I just checked our administration's um, version. Um, it, it really um, the the more strict clauses actually uh, applies to government or government owned company, mm -hmm. and and that that is the more protected. And the private sector whistleblowing only pertains to its violation of the Food Protection Act, Environmental Protection Act, um, you know, uh, the Money Laundry Act, and, and so on. And these are the formal protections. Uh, and I think so it will not run counter uh, to the double yeah. article yeah. bottom line. Yeah. Th those, those are all fine. Yeah. I mean, and we, we would not want to change those. That, mm -hmm. That's all good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're open. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, you have to speak louder. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the only concern I have now is about the risk. Mm -hmm. uh, if the, uh, the case actually go to the courts, mm -hmm. we just like uh, mitigate the, the risk the mm -hmm. company can face. Mm -hmm. The problem so far, if, if my concern is um, the, the article one, we propose article one mainly is dealing with the uh, CSR. CSR. That's CSR. Right. CSR. So if mm -hmm. we read the legislati uh, legislation history, they didn't mm -hmm. talk about the benefit corporation. That, that's exactly right. So mm -hmm. uh, I will suggest if we mm -hmm. can, or if uh, Audrey can add mm -hmm. this on the, the, the mm -hmm. explanation part, mm -hmm. because we, if you want to expand, extend, expand, expand the meaning of the article one so far, mm -hmm. the proposal we need more to rely on. Right. Okay. Right. And the second one is the. Uh, um, I read the, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Economic Affairs, their internal documents, yeah. and we want to see this more this like a public announcement. Yeah. And it will have more binding effects. Yeah. Okay. So I will add, add right, this right. to it. So, so I, I was just passing the interpretation uh, to the people here. And so we will right. uh, we'll have the, the movement people check the interpretation of essentially MOEA's public announcement that they will. Um, interpret the laws in a way favorable uh, to, to this concern. Mm -hmm. And so if uh, people need more uh, carefully worded or more precisely worded interpretations, we can certainly do that. Uh, but uh, yes. th th I'll stress that this wording already is taken mm -hmm. from the professor's um, you know, utterances in our consultation meeting, mm -hmm. uh, basically word for word uh, in, into this uh, interpretation. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so it means that in the future that there won't be a, a new form, a legal form mm -hmm. of company called benefit corporation. Right. It will right. just just be closely held public uh, corporations or non closely held uh, joint stock corporations with a self disclosed charter that honors the multi or triple you know bottom line clauses that uh, self regulates to fit three or four okay. uh, criteria and have the Mingjian Zilu Liemong, the people in the private sector to declare their own criteria of being included in their registry based on public audited open data of the company documents. Yeah. Yeah. So, do think yes, that, uh, uh, go ahead, Ray. Uh, do you think that uh, if we don't call a uh, new form, or we don't create a new form called benefit company, instead that uh, uh, follow the spirit of uh, the global benefit corporation movement? Yes, I think it follows the spirit. It's the fundamental nature of the change is exactly what we want to see. 
the only thing that's missing is the name, right? So you won't be able to easily say that this company is a benefit corporation that's the same type of company as exists in Italy and the United States and hopefully other places. But anyone that knows the company or investigates the company will immediately conclude that, in fact, it does meet the characteristics. Mm -hmm. So at, at some point, it would be nice if there were a way to identify it. Mm -hmm. But I think politics is the art of the possible. Uh, and if, if we can get this kind of a change, that's certainly better than where the law in Taiwan is today. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting an affirmative statement in the law that a company can commit to the triple bottom line and can commit to considering stakeholder interest and can commit to transparency is a great step forward. Mm -hmm. And certainly that's what, that's all that B-Lab would ask of B Corps. Uh, and there may be other companies as well that could adopt this even if they're not certified B Corps. Okay. Right. And I think the stamp will come from a multi stakeholder governance structure outside of the Ministry of Economy. The MOEA exclusively does not want to be the arbiter of what exactly is a benefit corporation or not. Uh, that's their statement. Uh, they, they put it very clearly. Yeah. They think that it needs to be in the government talked with the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Labor, and if, if only for the um, you know, solidarity of the different forms of the social enterprise movement. And so have a MSG, a multi-stakeholder governance structure that uh, puts out those stamps, means that the stamp is not exclusive to one ministry. And that also means that the civil society and the private sector is free to allow their alternative stamps all based on the same public data of uh, transparency. I think that's the governance model that I would like to see. So if I can, let me ask you a few more questions. So to change to this form and to adopt this legislation, it will require a vote of the shareholders, is that correct? The shareholders have to vote to, to make the change? To make the founding document change, it's always a, a vote. Uh, it's always a vote of the shareholders, yeah. right? And is that a majority vote or a higher vote? A super majority vote. Just, just, is it a higher super majority? Super majority. Is it 66 or 70? Do you know what it is by any chance? It's not too high, I guess, is the only concern. It's a two-third. It's a two-third vote. Okay. All right. Okay. And... If the company proposes this change and it's approved, do the shareholders who object to the change have a right to have their shares bought back by the company? So far, no. No, so there, there's no requirement to give the non-agreeing shareholders an exit? No. No. Okay. And Those are issues that have arisen in other places, mm -hmm. but that's good. Okay. It all sounds good to me. Awesome. So I would love to see it. I'll run it through my Google Translator mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and anything else that I can do to help, uh, I would you know be more than happy to participate. So just let me know. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, for the, mm -hmm. the registration platform yeah. you mentioned, yeah. you think it's, uh, uh, it's better for government to hold it mm -hmm. or... Well, uh, so as an open data advocate, uh, the idea is for the Ministry of Economy to release this data as open data. And by open data, we mean that it's not just freedom of information access. It also means that uh, any private sector or civil society is allowed by our open license um, to you know, publish it independently, run a audit, uh, do any value add analysis they want to do, and so on. And so the government will host a canonical version uh, but it will not object to other ministry or other government agencies to run its separate registries, nor will it disallow any civil society or private sector to host their subset of the registry. In, in actual fact, there is already a subset registry going on with the Minjian Zivili and Mong. Yeah, so, so that's already the case. Um, so let me, let me ask you a question about that. As part of the open data, yeah. 
what is the information that is available to the public in the register that, that is collected by the registry? Right. Uh, so, <clears throat> so uh, let me just very quickly check the website. Um, so, in addition to the uh, company charter or company founding uh, documents, um, you will be just a second. Um, these things. Um, the company name, uh, the foreign language name, if any, that's also recognized by the new company law. Um, okay. the, and um, uh, you know, per person responsible, the um, number of uh, employees, the um, date of founding, its total uh, capital, uh, and the contact phone, contact email uh, address, its social purpose statement, um, its um, um, social innovation statement, meaning that how it differs from other people um, working in the same uh, area. Its right. main uh, service um, uh, description and its main product description, uh, and also contact details, including web pages and so on. That's it. Okay, good. I was concerned that the company not be required to make available proprietary information sensitive trade secrets and financial information but you're not including that no no these are all, no. all pretty public. yeah pretty public right information. And, and presumably the company has the ability to change that information in the registry yeah of course without but, but if they change the registry that's actually counter to the fact of course there's another law dealing with that yeah. right yeah but if they decided change their business and produce different products, they yeah. can so, uh, the change that information. The idea is that the registry is only good for one year anyway. For, for oh, good. Years, okay. They have to, to refill all the details. Yeah. And, but that's, I, that, I'm sure they can maintain it and then change every month if they want. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's good. I, I like that having that information available is, is good. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and it's not sensitive what I heard you describe, so that's fine. Right, and it's not exclusive to the government. Anyone can just swipe right. this information access it. to, to right. build a subset. Yeah. Good, mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Okay. Right, so thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Oh, sure, I'm mm -hmm. glad to have this conversation. It's nice to meet you. Hopefully I'll meet you in person at some point. Yes. Um, okay, so, so yeah, I guess see you online, hopefully offline then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Great. Bye. Thank you. See you, Corey. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.